All right, so we're looking at the 2017 exam question one. So we are given values in a table um, for feet and square feet. It says a tank has a height of 10 feet. The area of the horizontal cross sections of the tank at H feet are given by function A. So they're giving you the area of cross sections. So you have to imagine kind of like a 3D printer, like all these cross sections adding up to make a total volume of the tank. Um, function A is continuous and is decreasing. Um, selected values are given in the table. So letter A says, use a left Riemann sum with the three sub intervals indicated by the table to approximate the volume of the tank, indicate units of measure. So the first sub interval is from zero to two, so that's a length of two. And it said a left Riemann sum, so the number on the left is 50.3. And then the next sub interval is from two to five, so that's three. And the number on the left is 14.4. And then the third one is from five to 10, so that's five. And the number on the left is six and a half. And you don't have to do anything to that. I know that it's calculator allowed, but you don't have to evaluate that. So just leave it as it is. But it did say put units, and we are finding the volume of the tank. So I know that the cross sections were areas that was square feet, but this will be cubic feet since it is a volume. Um, it's like we're accumulating all of those cross sectional areas, um, adding up all of those slices and getting the total volume. All right, so letter B, uh, does that approximation in part A overestimate or underestimate the true volume of the tank? Explain your reasoning. So the values in the table are decreasing. So I usually just draw like off to the side, something that's decreasing. The values in the table were decreasing, and we did a left sum. So if you pull from the left side of all the sub intervals, you're gonna take from what's higher up. So it's gonna be an overestimate. So an overestimate because, um, was it A of T? Sorry, I'm trying to go backwards and forwards. A of H, go switch between the tabs here. Overestimate because the function A of H is decreasing and this is a left sum. If the graph um, was increasing and we did a left sum, then it would be an underestimate. Or since it's decreasing, if we did a right sum, that would be an underestimate. So I usually just draw a line that's increasing and decreasing to help me you know, like visualize that. All right, letter C, the area in square feet of the horizontal cross sections can be given by, and they give you a function. So before we were just using the table, now we're gonna use this function that they give us. Based on this model, find the volume of the tank, indicate units of measure. So it said that the tank is 10 feet high. We want to accumulate all of these cross sections from zero to 10. So it's gonna be integral from zero to 10, um, F of H dH, and we will just have to type that in. All right, so it is math nine, zero to 10, and then the function is what's gonna go inside of there. And again, they never give you something pleasant. It's always like a gigantic mess. 50.3 over uh, e to the power 0.2x, and it says h, I'm typing x, um, plus x dx. And make sure you do three decimal points. So it's 101.325. And again, it said indicate units of measure. This is the same thing we did in part A. They wanted us to find the volume. It's just while this was an estimate, here they gave us an actual function to type in, and this would be an actual value. Uh, but they're both representations of volume, so it would be cubic feet. It's just in part A, it was an estimation. In part C, we found like, the actual volume. All right, and then part D, water is being pumped into the tank. Uh, the height of the water is five feet. I'm gonna list out what they tell us here. And the height is increasing at a rate of 0.26 feet per minute. So that's dH dt, the height is increasing 0.26 feet per minute. So we're filling the tank up. Using that equation from part C that they gave that 50.3 over whatever, using that, find the rate at which the volume of water is changing with respect to time. So dv dt is what we want. It should be positive um, since the tank is filling up. And it says when the height of the water is five feet. They kind of said that twice in there. Indicate units of measure. 
right, so let me come back so I can see where I'm writing here. So they give us um, that equation for the, the cross, cross sections. I'm gonna kind of start this the way that we looked at it in part C. Our volume is the integral from zero to whenever. Now we did zero to 10 and did the whole tank. This is just like it's filling up with water. So I'm just gonna say from zero until whatever the height of the water is, um, F of H V H. In part C, again, we found the volume of the entire tank. We just went from the bottom to the top, zero to 10. Here, we're just finding the volume of the water in the tank. So it's zero to whatever the height of the water is. But we want the rate. So we're gonna have to do the derivative of that. So derivative and integral cancel out. You just get F of H. So it's just that function. But you have to chain on the derivative of H. So times the H D T. And that's why they gave us that value because um, we're gonna need to plug that in. So the rate of change of the volume in the water, it's gonna be F of five, because they said um, when the height of the water is five feet and then times 0.26 for dH dt. So we are gonna plug five into that function, which let me go back to the other tab and get that. All right, so we're gonna plug five um, into that function. So it is gonna be, 50.3 over e to the power uh, 0 0.2 times five, plugging five in for h, so plus five. So that, and then times 0.24. So we get 1.694. And then again, it said, what are the units of measure? So volume, volume was cubic feet, like we put in both of these. This is a rate of change for the volume. So it's gonna be cubic feet per whatever the time was and the times were in minutes. So feet cubed per minute. All right, so let me go over what the points were for this one. In part A, it's two points for this. Um, it says a point for doing a left sum and then a point for the answer, but I don't see how you would do a left sum without also getting an answer. It would be two points for that. Um, part B is just worth one. You just have to write that explanation. You kind of either get it or you don't. Part C, it's a point for setting up the integral and then a point for that answer. And then in part D, it's two points for this derivative. So you get two points for that derivative and then a point for the answer. And that all adds up to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The ninth point is for putting units in parts A, C, and D, where it said to make sure you put units. So putting units for all three of those is the last point. So unfortunately, if you put these units and these units, but not these ones, you would lose that point. So you have to make sure you put them for all of them because they do that occasionally um, and make the ninth point uh, putting units throughout. So if you leave them off of one, you lose that point. So if you got stuck on part D, invent an answer. Like they won't take just the units, but if you put like 12, I don't know, make up a number and put the units because um, then you'll get that units point. And you can kind of tell when they're doing that because they'll say, indicate units of measure, indicate units of measure. They'll say it over and over again. Okay. 